My name is uh, Dimitrios. Uh, the last name is actually pronounced uh, Kehagias, uh, but the Germans were in charge of the European uh, transliteration standards, so this is what you get. Um, I will talk uh, about um, uh, perceptual image hashing, which is uh, a method to do uh, image uh, similarity search in Perl, of course. Um, it's uh, something I worked on for uh, the company I work for, Spare Room. Um, it's, it's a household name in England. You would know it because uh, it's the standard uh, room and roommate finding app there. Uh, with over 11 million users. It's uh, less common in the US because we, we entered the market recently. And um, its emphasis is on quality of uh, and safety. Uh, like all the posted content is moderated. Uh, you could say it's exactly unlike uh, Craigslist. Um, uh, so due to the, the volume of the posted content, we have lots of users, lots of content, and we want to uh, have uh, our moderators uh, at least uh, quickly look through it. Um, we continuously develop tools to uh, help them with the moderation queue uh, to process things faster. So uh, one of the desired features was uh, when they, they get the ads, the newly posted ads, they would like to immediately see next to them what other ads they're related to by either the same or different users and uh, going by images if these images were are reused because we don't want uh, people uh, posting uh, like flooding results with the same uh, uh, properties um, or even um, faking properties or things like that. Uh, I, I should say that our backend is uh, uh, exclusively almost uh, Perl and we use a MySQL database, which indexes uh, our images. Just for UK, it's over 25 million images. And so we uh, care about performance and uh, ease of integration uh, for this project because it's, it was just one more tool that the moderators use. We didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, do anything uh, drastic. So first of all, when I say similar or identical images, what do I mean? Because uh, depending on the scenario, you might mean different things. Uh, for us, the most common case is when a user uploads an advert, uh, sorry, uh, uploads an image, they might then um, visit the page where they, they uploaded the, their advert page and they download it again at a later time to reuse it. And we use uh, Fastly, which is a Perl company too. Uh, to do the, our image optimization. So the file they will download is not the file they uploaded. It will be resized, compressed. So that's the main, the, the most common thing that uh, we would uh, consider uh, similar and they would be looking for. Uh, we would uh, like to recognize sequences taken of the same subject. Like you go into a room and take uh, multiple photos. Uh, you shouldn't upload those as uh, different ads or something like that. And um, minor edits, some people try to add uh, logos to uh, an older picture or um, a border or something like that. We're curious about mirrored images. Uh, in uh, some uh, scenarios, people tend to, like if they want to avoid something, they mirror images to go around filters. Uh, but overall, it's similar to what uh, the Google image search does. Uh, so we wanted something like that on our own system. Uh, since I mentioned Google, how do they do it? Uh, their uh, algorithm is not um, published, but uh, we do know they use uh, perceptual hashes. The, the perceptual hashes are, are uh, locally sensitive hashes, uh, which means that um, if you have uh, similar images and uh, you pass them through, through a hashing scheme that is locally sensitive, you end up with similar hashes. Um, I can give you a, a quick example of um, uh, such a hash, hashing scheme. So we take the image of uh, the Andromeda Galaxy and we, we scale it to eight by eight and uh, reduce it to grayscale. We convert it to bitmap by using the average 
brightness as uh, the threshold. And we end up with uh, a nice bitmap, which if you assign zero to black and one to one, you end up with a nice 64-bit uh, uh, stream. And you can represent it with a hex. So this is actually uh, called average hashing, this method. It's not very robust. I think uh, it's useful in OCR and things like that. Um, because then you, uh, the idea is that you, you measure the difference in uh, bits, how many zeros and ones have swapped, and if they're, uh, which is the humming, humming uh, distance. And uh, if a uh, few of them have, have swapped, it's a possibility, it's a similar image, although this method uh, gives you quite uh, a few false uh, uh, positives. I looked at uh, open source ha hash, uh, p perceptual hash solutions. Um, there's one category that uh, is not for us. Um, there are very complex computer vision algorithms, uh, very computationally intensive that recognize features in images and they uh, calculate uh, very long uh, perceptual hashes like hundreds of bytes per feature. And these are not what we're looking for. So I won't uh, discuss those. The most well-known uh, like full image uh, perceptual hash is uh, the phorg implementation. It's a C++ uh, with a C-like uh, API. And its original implementation used uh, a discrete uh, cosine transform. I'll talk to you later about it. It's the DCT. And um, it, uh, it's not particularly uh, fast, like four hashes per second for the average size uh, of our uploads. Um, but the hashes it produces are 64-bit, which is quite fast to uh, find differences in. And, uh, uh, and they do perform well in the similarity categories that uh, we we're looking for. Uh, the phorg uh, also has a newer algorithm based on MAR wavelets, uh, even slower, uh, better, at uh, more robust in some uh, types of uh, manipulations that we can recognize, but it's nine uh, times uh, larger in size. And uh, if you have millions and millions of images, it starts to become like, uh, you need a basically a, a multi-vantage point uh, tree storage and uh, things that I wanted to avoid. So overall, the so far the phorg uh, DCT uh, implementation seemed uh, the most promising. There is a Python image hash, which I uh, I wouldn't really want to have uh, our uh, Pro app have to write on a Python uh, for some things. It would be uh, like the deployment wouldn't be so easy, but um, I did want to give it a try, but I couldn't install it because I had to downgrade my Python. So. It, I want. Uh, I, I don't know if it's any better than uh, phorg. Uh, what I really wanted is a Perl implementation, which would make it much simpler for me. And uh, CPAN has a lot of things, and they do have image hash, uh, which uh, gives you three kinds of hashes: average, which is the same as what I showed you originally uh, in the example, uh, difference hashes, and DCP, DCT-based uh, phash. So. Um, this is how you use it. You have to slurp your image and uh, pass it as a pass the blob and run the phash method on it. And it gives you a 64-bit uh, hash or like 16 uh, hex uh, characters. Uh, it seemed to work fine at first glance. It uh, gave me similar hashes for similar images. Uh, with no excess, it was I was surprised it was a bit faster than uh, phorg. Um, and uh, then I tried it with uh, uh, like a, a sample size of 10,000 images to see how it does. Um, so it produced a, a big amount of uh, hash collisions. Uh, you can see here it's uh, the first 12 of those 10,000 images. Uh, on the upper right, it's those 12 images. Or, uh, there are other uh, rooms or gardens or uh, faces that are each completely different. And um, 
Uh, does anybody notice anything uh, weird about the hashes? Uh, so there's a lot of zeros. Uh, there was a 2% chance of collision because of that. And in an average, if you, from, if you had uh, like 25 million images and you had a threshold of difference of eight, you'd come up with uh, half a million of uh, results being uh, uh, the same. So it was kind of uh, not useful. So I looked into the code to see what was going wrong. And I saw that um, the, the DCT calculation was uh, a bit strange. It, uh, from what I could see, it was trying to avoid doing all the calculation uh, because you don't really use the entire DCT, as we'll see later. So it was skipping some steps and something where I was trying to figure out if it could work the way they, uh, they were doing it. But then I noticed that it was uh, borrowed from a PHP phash implementation. So I, I gave up trying to see if I can make it work as it is. Um, I, I mentioned DCT a lot. Uh, let's see what it is. Um, it's, uh, it basically takes uh, a spatial signal, which is uh, your image, X and Y pixels with uh, amplitudes for each point, and it converts that to the frequency domain. So coefficients of trigonometric uh, functions, basically. If you are familiar with signal processing, it's very similar to the fast Fourier transform. And uh, when I say frequencies, you can think of them in, in our context, you can think of them as uh, size of features, like a high frequency, um, uh, like the highest frequency you can get is a feature of one pixel, like pixel black, pixel white, pixel, that's the highest frequency you can have, while this, the lowest frequency zero is the entire image. Um, so when we say DCT in, in, uh, for images, we uh, specifically refer to type two of four different types of DCTs, which is also called the VED DCT. Um, and uh, we want a two dimensional DCT, which looks a bit like this. It's um, uh, how you get the, uh, the a matrix B from a matrix, uh, which is your uh, DCT, the coefficients of the frequencies from uh, matrix A, which is your image. We, I won't go through the math, obviously. And uh, you should know that no information is lost. Uh, what the matrix you get, you can reverse uh, back to the original one with uh, the inverse DCT, which will, looks quite similar. And um, in general, DCT and dice DCT are uh, used uh, widely for compressing, decompressing uh, video. Uh, if you're as old as me, you might remember from uh, the 90s, uh, uh, if you had a DVD ROM and you wanted to play a DVD video on a, uh, on a Pentium 2, for example, you needed an, a graphics card that had uh, hardware IDCT, like an ATI or S3. Anyway, um, so this is the, the naive implementation in Perl. It's uh, four nested for loops, so that makes in big O notation for and in the fourth, and um, you get, uh, uh, you give it, uh, uh, oops, you give it a nice uh, table of uh, integers with your pixel amplitudes from zero to 255, and you get the uh, frequency coefficients, which are real numbers, and, uh, sorry, my voice is going. So you get a table of uh, a matrix of real numbers, and um, on the upper left is frequency zero, and frequencies go up to the right horizontally and uh, uh, down vertically. Let's see. <clears throat> I will show, uh, so it's better to go to visual representations to understand what this is and what it does. And, uh, I will start with a sample image. In the Lena tradition, it's a crop 
from a bigger image that might be considered of poor taste. And um, to make it simpler, we'll go to the uh, grayscale version. So it's each, each pixel is just uh, an 8-bit number and uh, down to 256 by 256 pixels. So it's, we have uh, a matrix of, uh, well, it will be stored in an array of 65,000 uh, integers. I will be using the module math VCT, which was made for, for uh, this purpose. Out of uh, curiosity, I tried running this 256 by 256 uh, on the naive algorithm on the previous uh, slide. It took 28 minutes on this laptop with just a single calculation. I won't try it on a, reg a regex engine, which <laughs> we could also do. Um, so we run the DCT on the data, and uh, we try visualizing it. If I use uh, linear normalization, we notice that uh, it's mostly black. There's no good contrast there. There is a bit of color in the upper left, uh, blue for um, uh, positive, uh, red for negative. But uh, because the average uh, amplitude on the upper left is much higher than the rest, uh, you get a black thing unless you normalize logarithmically, which is uh, still dark there. But hopefully you can see that it's uh, a bit um, um, colorful. Yeah, uh, this, uh, there will be, will be a link to the slides at the end and all the images and the code to run the demo yourself uh, will be available. Um, if you run the IDCT on this um, uh, matrix, you can get the original image back. So. Now, the most valuable characteristic of this transform, why we do it, is that uh, the significant information is, the in, is in the upper left. So we try to see what happens if we remove all the information except uh, an, a, a square on the upper left. So we try first, uh, it's not very visible, but it's a square of uh, only the first, the top left uh, quarter of the image. So we keep 25% of the DCT. And with an IDCT, we get pretty much the image back. If we make it smaller, it's 32 by 32 on the upper left. It's a tiny thing. We still get the image pretty much. It's a bit um, more noisy and garbled, but we still get it out of fun. I tried with uh, keeping a 16 uh, size, which is 0.39% of the DCT. And that gave me sort of uh, the mustache is there, the glasses are there, the, yeah. Um, technically, if uh, you get, instead of the square, you keep the isosceles uh, right triangle on the upper left, uh, you get a bit better performance. So the, name, the same uh, number of uh, samples, the same size of, uh, um, uh, yeah, the, coefficients, same number of coefficients you keep uh, are better used, so you get a bit more detail on the image above. It's not very obvious, but it will, it's measurable, as we'll find out. So I tried what happens if we drop the, low, the, the opposite thing, the lower frequencies, and uh, we keep the high frequencies. So I will also keep the first point, frequency zero, because that's the overall brightness. And um, you definitely can't see it now, but there's a hint of uh, detail, and that's all you get with all that data. Um, so that's why uh, it's used in compression algorithms. Um, but let's try doing uh, different and more uh, uh, fun things on the DCT. So I'll swap X with Y. Any idea what will happen? So you get rotation and mirroring at the same time. Um, 
what if we swap the sign of every odd index coefficient? That's quite a bit harder, but I have a reason for doing this. That will give you just a mirror. What if you do the even indexes, indices instead? Okay, I, I see some mirroring the other way. It's actually still mirroring, but we inverted colors. Um, what if we do all, change the sign on every sample, except the first one, I'll, I'll keep the first one because it's the brightness, I don't want to touch the brightness. No, they don't dare now. So just inverted colors. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the, the zero frequency, I try to have it to show you that it's brightness. That's what happens. If I increase it by 25%, I increase the brightness. Um, so I'll go the, I'll do the opposite way. This won't be very visible on this uh, projector. I blur the image and um, the DCT gets darker uh, the, the more you go down and right. So you could effectively do a blur on the DCT itself by uh, darkening, like, by like reducing the uh, amplitude of uh, the matrix as you go right and down. How would the DCT of, an, uh, of a barcode look like? Who knows? But you should be able to tell now, maybe? Yeah, it's a one dimensional, it's a line at the, it's one line at the top. Uh, yeah. What is the DCT of white noise? So it's the only image I show a non-logarithmic view and it's, uh, it's dark there, but it's still white noise just in the colors I assigned, uh, blue and uh, and red. Um, so now that we have a good idea about DCTs, hopefully, let's see what the p hash process, the calculation is um, is about. P hash org uh, itself does a seven by seven mean filter first. Uh, I don't do it because it gives me worse uh, matching results from my tests. Uh, so I avoid it like. Uh, the Perl image uh, hash did, and I instead go directly to resize to 32 by 32. You need to use at least bilinear uh, resizing as a filter. I convert the color of each pixel to luminosity. This is the standard uh, way to do it. it takes, uh, um, because it depends on uh, your eye sensitivity, you're more sensitive to green. So green is, uh, has a higher weight in the conversion. And then you calculate the 32 by 32 DCT. You find the average or median, if you prefer, of the top left of the eight by eight, the, the top left eight by eight, eight by eight DCT coefficients. And um, you convert, you use this as a threshold to convert them to bits. So in our case, we have found a median of 36.8 and we got this. Uh, nice uh, bit stream and hex. So let's see how it works comparing the hashes. The, the fastest way to do a Hamming distance on uh, bit streams is uh, just to do a, a bitwise exclusive OR uh, on a 64-bit uh, machine that works, okay? So we add uh, a credit uh, to the image and uh, the p hash has a difference of uh, two. That's a 97% similarity. We crop 10% uh, of the image, mostly from the sides, and we add a little contrast. Uh, yeah, good luck with the contrast on that. Yeah, there is a contrast change too, trust me. And um, the difference is now four. That's still 94% similarity. So let's take still an M31 photo, but 
not one I took. This one is from NASA JPL in the ultraviolet. Gives me a difference of 16. That's actually halfway to complete random because random images would have on average a 50% similarity. If they had 100% similarity, it's very specific. They're exactly the opposite uh, hashes. That's not random. So this is halfway. We'd say they're not similar images, basically. Um, the familiar image from before, that's 26 difference, so 59% similarity, pretty close to the randomness. So overall, we can say the, the p-hash is uh, extremely dominant to uh, aspect ratio and size and color changes because we always start with a 32 by 32 uh, grayscale. It's uh, very tolerant to small scale changes, so noise that's gone from the DCT process, compression artifacts. It's uh, tolerant to small size feature changes. If they're small enough, uh, like a text or a logo, uh, they will give you similar hashes. Uh, it's tolerant to crops only if they're small. Um, and uh, rotation changes confuse it even more. You can get away with uh, up to like five degrees of rotation. Um, and overall, it's what I wanted for the uh, application, but uh, I really like the Perl version to work, so why not make it work? So I started working on uh, improving it. Uh, I changed so much that in the, in the end, I just made a, a new module that only does, does uh, p-hashes. And um, it uses uh, the, the math DCT I mentioned before. It's a correct uh, implementation. It's the fastest possible algorithm. And uh, it does 34,000 uh, per second on uh, an M1 core. So it takes the, the delay from the DCT calculation out of the picture. So it's all about how fast your image library is which is why I added support for the fastest image library, which is MLib, MLib2. It's from the uh, Enlightenment Foundation libraries. Um, and uh, I did, for people who want to use ImageMagic or Imager, I switched to uh, better and faster resizing filters. And they you don't have to slurp anymore if you don't want to. And um, I did keep the image uh, hashes average method as the default uh, because I liked uh, the better tolerance to change. Um, but I added the median as an option, which is what phorg uses for less uh, false uh, negatives. Uh, this is how you use the, um, the module. You just, uh, if you don't define an image library, just tries them to see what you have on your system and you just called phash uh, by itself for the default, or you uh, choose the method, uh, which is median here as an example. And there's a utility faction to function to give you the humming distance between two hex, hex hashes. Uh, so it was already a great upgrade over phash.org. Uh, it gave you a, a reduced false negative rate and uh, a huge speed advantage. Uh, it's 16 times faster. So it took me two days to hash our image library instead of a month. Uh, I was using a, like a 16 core uh, Xeon system, but still uh, I would have needed a fleet to do it with phorg. Um, now the problem is how to search through millions and millions of uh, hashes. And because we want approximate hashes, right? Uh, the most common solutions is that if you if you're using PostgreSQL, they have like these fancy indices, and uh, you can have you can make a custom SPGIST implementation uh, or tweak an extension like PG similarity, and you could sort of do it. So there are people uh, going that way. I don't know how fast it ends up being, uh, but it's it seems to be usable, and. Um, Another solution is uh, to implement a BK or a, um, MVP tree in memory. And uh, it depends on the size of the collection. I, I found a Python implementation 
granted it was Python, but uh, still it, it was 20 gigabytes for our uh, collection, which was like just for one feature in the moderator queue, I'd need a server to, uh, to serve it. So phorg has an MVP tree storage on disk, but it's too slow for a, a large collection. So, I mean, we have a MySQL uh, index table, the images which we join with the adverts and the users, and uh, we get everything together that we can. We need to show. Uh, like, I wish I could uh, add something. And uh, I didn't really mind about some missing some matches. So I thought, uh, what if we would use smaller hashes, like in a way that they're small enough to uh, have most similar images fall exactly on the same hash and uh, still uh, not uh, give you all the like false positives possible. So I experimented with virus, uh, virus well, various. Uh, sizes of uh, DCT uh, subsets, and um, I uh, I dropped the frequency position, which is always one, uh, the frequency zero position, sorry, which is always one, and I figured out that uh, I was getting a big advantage if I used the isosceles right angle, right triangle instead of uh, a square. So in in the end, after experimentation, I settled with two hash configurations, what I call reduced hashes. The one is, uh, I call it phash6, which is um, you take a, a six by six top left segment and you drop the lower uh, right half and the first, you're left with 20 bits, which is, uh, um, and it matches 99% of uh, similar images in, in the category we were interested in, fall on the same hash and um, there's uh, the phash7, which go, starts from a 7 by 7 gives you 27 bits, and 98% of the uh, resized compressed images fall on the same hash. Um, I'm going through, I'm, I'm not, the, the details on the slides are there for you to look afterwards if you're interested, the details on performance and things like that, I won't go through them. Um, this is the way to get these uh, on uh, the module. So you define the geometry, uh, reduce, and method. The phash6 uses a median. The phash7 uses an average. That's on purpose uh, because the I'm using two because they're complementary to each other. If you, you use them together as an or, they uh, increase the recognizer. They go up to 95, 99.5% of uh, similar images uh, having either one or the other hash and their uh, false uh, positives are not very similar so they, they can each exclude each other and in addition in combination um, even the full p hash has uh, uh, a chance of uh, false uh, positives which is a bother if you are a moderator and you see like uh, random images show up that don't look similar and uh, using phash6 and phash7 uh, as well uh, gets rid of about 95% or, or more of the false uh, positives. Um, and then how to use them with our uh, MySQL database. So you, you add all the three types of hashes, the full phash, the phash6, phash7, and you add indices to the phash6 and 7, obviously. And you just use a, a, an OR, which MySQL uh, combines as an index merge. And you can return this on a 2.5 gigabyte table of hashes. It takes 30 milliseconds to return the results. Um, so you can see that it, it screens uh, the full hash as well for a maximum of um, whatever limit you want. If I did the, the, the difference by itself, it would take 80 seconds without using phash6 and phash7, which would be unusable, obviously. So um, then you have, uh, you can use the three types of hashes, as I said, to exclude the false uh, positives. And uh, this is a way to do it. 
uh, you can read the details if you're interested later. Um, so another good idea, the good thing we use uh, P hash six for is, for example, we have uh, many people going up, uh, uploading the energy performance certificates, which we don't want to come. They are similar. Each property has a similar performance certificate, yes. And we managed to encode them just as 13 P hash indices. There are 13 categories of uh, PPCs every time and uh, every once in a while they add a new type and uh, we just add it. So you can do fancy things like that. Remember how we could uh, mirror images with uh, BCT easily. So if we average the uh, the odd index coefficients, the ones that we reversed to get the mirror, if we uh, if we took the absolute value of them instead, so they cannot uh, uh, be mirrored, we will get a mirror proof sort of uh, hash. So that's a feature you can use. It's mostly for fun because you lose some uh, information and uh, it makes uh, for more false positives. It's, it's like you're using a smaller hash. Uh, what we actually do is that uh, we produce the uh, hash of the mirror itself without actually manipulating the image. Uh, we, uh, the, the module uh, caches all the BCT results. So it's a free function to just reverse the sign of uh, some coefficients and you get the mirror uh, P hash and you can check that too. And yes, we did find many people were uploading mirror images. I added more features. Why have the main p hash be a square since uh, the triangles uh, work better? So there's uh, the option geometry instead of uh, x by x. It also takes number of bits. So it goes, it traverses the uh, BCT matrix in diagonals and it stops when it gives you uh, enough uh, bits for the size that you want. And uh, even more features. Um, so you have the average method and the median method, uh, but there are three more methods uh, that you can use that have uh, even better characteristics than uh, median uh, and, and average. It's always a trade-off between uh, uh, false positives and uh, uh, false negatives. So you have three options. One uh, is logarithmic, one is difference, one is average, but taking more samples past the point where you uh, use. And um, it's in the module description too, what the performance is, of which one is, so you can uh, choose. And um, I have some performance tests, uh, uh, I've done some performance tests that I won't go through them, but if you're interested, you will uh, you can take a look at uh, various manipulations I did, both on uh, our own uh, data set, taking a representative sample, and also on um, a Google sample with uh, 125,000 images. Um, and that had uh, many false negatives because there were many images of uh, a dark sky with a moon, and how many ways can you photograph the moon? But it's good for comparison. I won't go through it in any case, uh, just to say that uh, with uh, the image p hash module, you can get 100% in many categories. You couldn't get that in, uh, with p hash org. And um, you can get uh, a better, uh, lower chance of false positives too, depending on the method you use. Um, from, uh, so the, uh, first day we used it back in 2019. Um, then the module I, re I released today, image p hash, it's on CPAN, is not the one we use because I, I continued uh, growing it and uh, experimenting. Uh, but yeah, back in 2019, we had some interesting first results. So you see one advert in one uh, area of London and you see miraculously a very similar bathroom in another area in London or 
you have this bed in one area and this bed in a different area, or you have like this nice loo, as they say. You can see it's England because of the separate uh, taps for hot and cold water. And now it's nicer, I guess, on a different advert. Or uh, yeah, another loo that's even worse. And yeah, that's much different now. And at this point, I should just say that uh, Spare Room is always looking for talent. We're based in, in Manchester, UK. Uh, if uh, for beginners, we, we train them on site in Perl, but uh, remote working is fine for experienced developers. And uh, you can look us up for more info, spareroom.com slash jobs, or email me with questions. And we actually, if you know someone with uh, GCP Terraform, Papa Jenkins experience, message me as well. We have openings like that as well. And this is where you find the code used for the talk and the talk itself. So you can peruse at your own uh, leisure. Uh, thank you. And uh, <laughs> any questions? Yes. Because we don't use Postgres. So it would be, as I said, I, I want to avoid having uh, our uh, app deployment be like heavily altered with new things just for this feature. And uh, also, uh, if I had uh, a database, uh, a PostgreSQL database ready, I would at least try to see the performance because I was unsure about if the performance would be good enough for our uh, si the size of uh, our image set. Any other question? No? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much.